billions of people are using a lot of electronic devices. Therefore, it is natural that a lot of e-waste arises. Americans throw away an estimated $55 billion in e-waste material annually. The World Health Organization is warning that the amount of e-waste around the world is growing significantly. But what is e-waste and why are there many health risks associated with it? Electronic waste, referred to as e-waste, includes all discarded electric or electronic devices. The danger produced from e-waste may come from direct contact with harmful materials and heavy metals such as lead, cadmium and chromium, from inhalation of toxic fumes and from the leaching of toxic materials and their accumulation in soil, water and food. According to the Institute of Physics, the huge amount of lead in e-waste, if released into the environment, could cause severe damage to human blood and kidneys, as well as to the central and peripheral nervous systems. Even some current recycling activities can pose a risk of injury. To date, there has been some recycling of the valuable elements contained in e-waste, such as copper and gold. However, these are often extracted using fairly primitive methods, such as burning cables to remove the plastic and extract the copper. These methods expose workers, who are often children, to toxic fumes. According to The WHO, several organizations have highlighted the need for interventions in the field of e-waste. A lot of organizations target children as they are the most vulnerable to harm from exposure to e-waste. As children are still growing, harmful substances can affect their development to a greater extent. So what can you do to help combat e-waste? You can sell or donate old electronics. You can maintain electronics properly so they last longer. You can recycle and dispose of e-waste properly. Before buying a new electronic device, consider repurposing an old one. You can store data online to clear storage space and help your electronics last longer. You can buy ENERGY STAR rated electronics. There is good reason to follow these few simple rules. By recycling 1 million cell phones, more than 35,000 pounds of copper, 33 pounds of palladium, 772 pounds of silver, and 75 pounds of gold can be recovered. That material is not only worth money, but recovery will also help to reduce the amount of mining necessary. But why is it so hard to follow these rules? Because nowadays electronics are made to be replaced. It's called planned obsolescence. Take for example how Apple's latest operating system made extensive use of haptic features that required an iPhone 6S and so forth. These kinds of features are very common in today's electronics and so you are forced to replace them and one has to wonder what happens to the old appliances. Can they be fully recycled now that parts of them are no longer needed? This situation is further worsened by the economics of gadgets. Very often it is cheaper to buy something new than to fix something old. And so we find ourselves with two unfortunate situations. The first is the dangerous increase in mining for procurement for the materials needed for production of gadgets. And the second is large amounts of electronics in landfills leaking toxicity. What is sad is that this waste could easily be reduced by reuse, repair or resale. According to the report of ENS Europe Agency, built-in obsolescence has seen the share of large household appliances that had to be replaced within the first five years grow from 7% in 2004 to 13% in 2013. And companies are also to blame as they increasingly end support for older models or the operating systems that run on them. E-waste is caused by the whole idea of pushing consumers to buy products quickly by making older ones obsolete and it is causing havoc on our planet. It's a complicated issue that requires a complex solution. One such solution would be to require electronic sellers to provide buybacks or return systems for used equipment. Export limits could also be introduced where the quantity exported has to equal to that recycled or reused. 
there are plenty of solutions that can be conceived if we just put our hearts into it. And for the sake of our environment, we should.